Um, okay, great. Uh, and I'll call the meeting to order now. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, the uh, Do we have a motion to approve uh, the minutes from uh, last month? I second. Leah, Leah and Margaret. Leah and Margaret. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Uh, citizen comments. Do we have anything? No. Okay. Um, oh, I did. I did them out of order. Oopsie. Man. See, leave me to chair the meeting. Things go haywire. <laughs> the um, the Noah didn't pass any notes uh, along to me for uh, administrative reports. Um, so we can uh, move uh, ahead to uh, Anne. Okay. Well, I just wanted to um, reiterate something that came up earlier, which is next month is your last meeting as the Community Relations Board. And in April, that's when the new um, boards go into effect. And April is going to be seen pretty much as a month of orientation um, in developing the new boards, what was important to the commission was that we put some structure around them in the sense of trying to standardize them to some extent, standardizing things like agendas and how minutes are done so that we can then put things on the website and be even more transparent to our constituents. That's the main reason for all of that kind of thing. We have I mean, I can't, I should show you the stack, but I'm not sure where I put it, of uh, resumes we have for the new board positions. There, it's a lot. And we should be deciding at the first March meeting, hopefully, who the new members of the new boards will be. You'll be notified almost instantly after um, we pass that at a commission meeting at that first March meeting as to who is on the new um, the new boards. Every new board has nine board members, which is not, not a lot more for you guys, but it is for most of the other boards. And we're gonna try to make sure that we have representation from each ward on the boards. Uh, it's not a hard and fast rule, but it's we'd like to spread it out so that we're making sure we have representation all across the community. Um, April 1st is the launch for the new boards. Again, it'll be mainly orientation and we'll, you know, go on from there. Looking Great. forward to it. Great, looking forward to it. Hopefully um, we'll have another, continue to have an engaged uh, what, community engagement board. Yes, exactly, yes. Uh, great. Um, do uh is laura there or, uh, no laura's out okay gotcha she did not leave she did not give me a report i asked her she didn't have anything for to report right. yeah. um okay. the citizens academy is going well but i'll let you all talk about that later great um robin what you got so let me just pull up my ar report so that i remember all the things i wanted to say <laughs> Okay, um, so next Monday, the library is going to be closed for staff development day. It's also President's Day. We're not normally closed on that day, but um, we're going to have a staff development day, so it's closed to the public. Um, I think school is also closed that day, so the normal, you know, kids banging on the doors to be let in when we close for staff day will not be an, an issue. Uh, <laughs> staff will receive training in electronic resources, readers advisory, early childhood learning, customer service, and staff safety. Um, the winter reading challenge is still open through March 20th. We are still selling tickets for our speaker series with best-selling author and sustainable food advocate Michael Pollan. Um, that's May 1st. Tickets are on sale for $25. And we are seeking gardens for the 2024 garden tour, which will be held on June 23rd. This is our premier fundraising event, our premier event that the library hosts We've done it for more than 30 years, and we want to keep it going as long as we can. Um, it is a big commitment for people to volunteer their gardens, but it is always absolutely amazing to get to walk through and see and just listen to everybody talking about plants and gardening, the people that that are not only on the tour, but the people that are 
taking the tour are just avid gardeners and nature lovers and plant lovers. So it's a really wonderful event. So if you or someone you know has a Mount Lebanon garden that can that you can volunteer to be on the tour, um, let me know and we'll get you contacted with the tour coordinator. It's you don't have to have like a fancy immaculate, you know, two acre curated garden it can just be anything we've had chickens on the garden we've had you know people that do sustainable gardening practices and composting and we'd like to talk about all different aspects of gardening so if you know someone with an interest in garden send them my way and my garden is going to be on the tour so what's that is line? it and my son's really the gardener of the family so we've got lots of sustainability and composting and neat Yes. That would be very cool. Good yeah, for you. Really yeah. I was also amazed, Robin, when I was reading about how much money the garden tour brings in for the library every year. It's like twenty thousand dollars, right? Yes. And yes. that's that's a that's a big amount of money. I was surprised and excited by that. Good yeah, job. Over the last 30 years, it's been hundreds of thousands of dollars that yeah. has been raised for the library so it's it's really it's a really special event i think you also ought to tell them that the elevator is working again oh, i guess i should have <laughs> yes after four months the <laughs> library elevator has been repaired and um has been inspected and then re-inspected because it was making some funny noises last week <laughs> but it's uh, the state and local right. inspections have cleared it it's safe it's in use so so it just brings forth the point that you waited we waited four months for a part that was needed to fix that elevator we have also now been waiting for in excess of three months for a part to fix one of the chillers at the ice rink mm -hmm. um it it remains a huge problem where if, if something if there isn't something we have to wait a long time to get things fixed which People hate, but unfortunately, it's really beyond our control to a great extent. So, yeah, the supply chain issues are still still there. <clears throat> yep, yep. And I think we saw it last night too at the commission meeting because um, it was what well, was it a Zamboni machine that you all right. are buying, an ice yeah. flattening machine, and um, we only had two bids for it, and one of yep. them was redacted. So right. We, I mean, it just gives us very little choice in what yeah. we're able to do for the municipalities. Yeah. Yeah. The one that was withdrawn was an American made. And we had to go with an Italian made because it was the only bid we had. Um, but I am happy to report that, believe it or not, today, because because I was up at the municipal building for the governor's visit, we actually had three bids for our sidewalk repair program. And you might wonder why we're celebrating, but we have gone through a couple of years where we were lucky to get one or maybe two bids. And that's not, that doesn't help competitiveness. We like three and four bids because it keeps the contractors on their toes, so to speak. But it's for you, the taxpayer, it helps keep the price of stuff down, which we try to do. So there you go. I'll stop. That's good to know. Yeah. It's interesting, isn't it? Uh, great. Claire, Claire Bruno did say she was going to join us tonight on virtually, but I don't see her online and I haven't received any um, text yeah. texts or, or emails from her. So I'm not sure what happened there, but well, I don't she, think we have a report well, for her. Do we, did you, oh, she, I think she just came in. I, oh, here we go. Yes, we did just get an email from her as well. Okay. Well, Claire, if you uh, if, or she's an attendee, so I don't know if we can make her a panel. Let me promote her. Okay, Claire, we were just talking about you. I hope your ears aren't burning. <laughs> yeah, Claire, if you're able to uh, join now, or we can come back to you. Um, if I know you're just jumping on, so um, so why don't we go ahead and we'll get keep moving, and then Claire, whenever you get logged in and uh, ready to roll, we can circle back to uh whatever report uh you have thank you sorry i'm no, getting everything set up on this computer now all good you're fine the um in the meantime we'll talk about the dei initiative uh and um 
We can talk about so for events. Uh, I know I've been working to get that policy uh, together uh, if to and haven't made a ton of progress with getting the policy together. Um, but um, that's still something that I'm working towards. Uh, hopefully by the time uh, we meet next uh, month, I'll have made more progress on that. So um, for tabling. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, so, Just yeah, make sure. for, yeah, that's the for people who haven't uh, don't remember. It's the um, working I had conversations with Dormont about uh, to help kind of guide the conversation. But the, the goal is to put together a draft uh, policy proposal that we can use to um uh inform future tabling for future uh for boards in the future so that we can uh make sure that we're actually uh have a plan uh and not just kind of throwing things together and make sure that it's equitable for uh all boards who want to table so um so that is our plan for that and then the only other thing i'll add um on the dei front is that um on the survey uh, we, uh, Ian McMean shared a, the demographic data for everybody, uh, who filled out the, um, the final, like three surveys. Um, those were, uh, the mobility resiliency and engagement surveys. Um, and those are the ones where we had, uh, wanted to have data, uh, demographic data. So, uh, about race, about ability, about, uh, we had religion in there. It was uh, very pretty comprehensive as far as um, the demographic data goes. So uh, Ian shared that out, um, and we are. I am working to um, and uh, with a full recognition that the goal for this was not to be fully representative of uh, everybody. So you know, if we have, I know, like we have, like I think it's ninety some, roughly ninety ish percentile, ninety four percent percent white residents in Mount Lebanon. And we didn't, or so it was, it's a high number. But point is, we didn't need to. The goal was not to have exactly ninety uh, percent of the people who responded were white and ten percent were non white. So um, the, um, but that being said, uh, I think it's still going to be instructive for us to look at the different groups and to see if there were outliers as far as over uh, significant overrepresentation or significant underrepresentation um so that we maybe look toward look to that so i've started to do that um uh data analysis and just cross referencing it with census data um but if there are others who are interested in joining me in the spreadsheet world i am happy to take uh to take on uh help with that but uh so just let me know the uh but I don't jumping on that <laughs> i know what you, no, no, nobody's jumped on the policy thing and nobody's jumped on jumping me on the spreadsheets with me come on people. hey adam i can uh i can give you a hand with that man if hey, you'd hey. like yeah yeah, great. Right. yeah so that's uh that's i love spreadsheets hey yeah. okay, now we're talking cool. i love my work and i love them in my that, free time I'm glad you probably do. Cool. Uh, you probably showed me uh, quite a few things then, because I I have fairly rudimentary knowledge. But um, all right, awesome. Yeah, if you just want to uh, connect, just shoot me an email. We can set I, time. I will do that. That'd be great. Thanks, bro. Uh, um, okay, let's uh, let's reverse back to Claire. Um, so it seems set up now. Okay, so I wasn't here last month or like the month before. I think I've been missing so much. So I don't really know what's going on. I'm sorry, but um, at the high school, nothing is really happening right now. Everybody is stressing out about second semester. Um, but one thing that we've been doing, um, we we're trying to organize. I think somebody in the community reached out to um one of our teachers at the school about doing like a district wide like clothing drive where we all oh. like to like kind of reverse like fast fashion because that's like going on a lot at the high school like a bunch of movements to like reduce like our um like our like global warming impact and things like that um and like our um ecological footprint I think it is <laughs> um and so we've been uh we have a meeting for that tomorrow so we were thinking about like organizing that with like middle schoolers elementary schoolers and like throughout like the entire school school district like things like that but um I'll have more information about that next time after we meet um tomorrow morning 
I did hear too yeah, uh, last night from our junior commissioner that the world that Mount Lebanon placed first in the National World Affairs Council competition. So, or no, I'm sorry. Wait, wait. I got it wrong. Of course, United Nations competition. It was like really a phenomenal thing. And we got first. Yes. Place. Yes. Yeah, right. We did, um, and now we're going to Maryland. And I get to go okay. finally. I'm so excited. Yay. Yeah. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> so, so tell excited. them. I probably bungled it. Tell them a little more about what it is. Would do you mind? Yeah. So um we always go to American for our model UN team. And mm -hmm. it's like our favorite place ever. Also, we went to William and Mary in November and we won first for some award for like the most diplomatic school or something like that. And um we for model UN, we just go and we all it's like a separate, it's like a um solo type thing so we all go and we just compete and then collectively we did the best and I think like over 10 of the 30 people that we took to American won first place in their event wow. so um we did we were super super successful there because uh -huh. apparently we are very good like arguers and we know a lot about foreign <laughs> policy <laughs> so, yeah and who, who's the faculty person for the model UN it's Mr. Savarese and Mr. Loomish okay they yeah. did a great job. Wow. They're amazing. I have Mr. Savarese for uh, international relations class, and he's the best teacher I've ever had, ever. That's They're amazing. Terrific. The team is so great. Very cool. Well, wonderful. Leo, thanks for sharing, Claire. That's where I am. I'm coming to us today. I'm about half a mile away from American University and down in D.C. So, oh, are yeah. oh. you? Um, but uh yeah okay let's um i don't know if there uh, anything uh anything new with police partnership in uh training i know that terry um there was uh, there was talk of another a um uh another copy with a cop i know that was uh some an email that circulated but i don't know if there's anything more for uh related to that and seems like you might have something yep yep as i nod my head yes um so we are still having conversations about which model would work best for Mount Lebanon <clears throat> to integrate a social worker or a person of that type into the police department working with the police and, of course, the population of Mount Lebanon. Interestingly enough, I'm <clears throat> taking part in what's called the Local Government Academy. It's kind of a well, it's not kind of, it is a training class, um, 10 Saturdays where we're being trained in everything you need to know as a, a newly elected official in a community. Um, and this last Saturday, we were out in Hampton and Hampton has a full one full-time social worker, one part-time social worker, and one intern social worker to deal with a population that's 18,000 people, about half of what we have in Mount Lebanon. It's been a very, very successful program. And the full-time social worker there has met with our chief, <clears throat> pardon me, has met with our chief and apparently has worked with a number of communities throughout Allegheny County about getting community police up and going. So, um, it's ongoing. I know that Chief Haberman is slated to come before the commission at a discussion session in the next couple of months to talk about the model that he has put together and has been working on. We're looking at hoping to have a model in place so it can be there for funding this spring. So I'll just keep you updated as we keep moving forward. <clears throat> That's great. This isn't um, police related, but the Allegheny County Library Association has mm -hmm. currently a social worker and libraries program. Um, they don't have enough to place in all of the libraries at this point, but Dormont is one of the locations where anybody from any community can go and meet with a social worker to, wow. to check out whatever mm -hmm. they need. To. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, one of the things I noticed about Hampton, because, you know, when you start talking about population that's half hour, half hours, and I thought, well, you gosh, you've really got a lot of call for a social worker. They don't have Outreach South. 
I mean, you, you need, it's important to remember that we have a wonderful resource for teenagers <clears throat> and middle-aged kids. And even, I think it goes into early college and that is missing in Hampton. So I don't, I, you know, I don't want to make a guess as to how many social workers we need in Mount Lebanon, because I think it's a little bit of a different story here, but yep. So. Anne, are you at all familiar with um, the, um, the, I know Harvard has their government performance lab, which studies things like this, the, the uh, like alternative 911 emergency responses. Mm -hmm. I believe they had a, uh, a, they had a, program in an evaluation in Pittsburgh and like the city of Pittsburgh. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I haven't looked into it in a little bit, but I'm almost certain that that was like the, an initiative, like as of like a year or two ago. Huh. Um, so I didn't know if that had to come up at all in conversations. It hasn't, but I'll, I'll ask about it. That's yeah, I, I'll, I'll look into it a yeah. little, little bit more into it and send you some sure. more information if I yeah. can. Very interesting. Great. Um, Okay. Um, in that case, uh, I don't think uh, I know we have anything on training. So uh, CRB uh, column without Laura, I don't think uh, we have much there unless anybody has uh, ideas. I know for um, our citizen service award, um, we'll have the, we selected that. We'll talk about that in a moment, but, um, but I think with, with those nominees, I think we had a couple uh, people who weren't selected who would make, still make for good features uh, in future CRB, um, whether it's the magazine column or just the, the issue uh, uh, at writ large, then I think that um, that's uh, a good potential there. So, um, Margaret, Citizens Mediations. Um, yeah, there's been some like discussions um, and some of them I think we've realized maybe best handled by a commissioner, uh, best handled by the police, but, um, you know, it's still great that when things arise that people will, you know, talk to me about it and we'll figure out the best way to sort things out. So, so we're still moving along. Yes. Wonderful. Uh, Residence Academy. Um, I know it's been going well. Um, Leah, would you, do you want to share? I know you've, you've kind of been to the, uh, the most recent, you and Stephanie have been to the ones more recently. So I don't know if you wanted, you had anything you wanted to share from them. They have all been fantastic. I have been blown away with how amazing they are. I mean, I don't want to brag, but we have an amazing group. Um, they're all just fantastic. Everyone asks amazing questions. We go overboard. We go over our time. I always ask them. I always tell them, like, if you see me, you probably know we're going to stay a long time. But <laughs> it's just, it's so interesting. It's so good. It's awesome to be able to know more about what goes on in Mount Lebanon. Um, so we have it tomorrow with the um, fire and EMS. So that'll be exciting. Yeah, we. I think we have, uh, after tomorrow, we have two more left um, to finish it up. So, uh, and I'll concur with uh, everything that Leah said. It's been really uh, interesting and to see just how uh, engaged uh, people uh, really get in the, I mean, it's a bit of a self-selecting group, I think, with people who are already kind of, uh, like uh, prone to be interested in uh, government, but nevertheless, uh, I've I've been encouraged by seeing their uh, reactions too. And uh, and as a reminder, if anyone is uh, interested in CRB is interested in sitting in on any of the sessions, um, they you you are more than welcome as a CRB member to do so. Um, there they happen at uh, uh, six thirty on the on Thursday nights. So. Uh, feel free to stop by, um, and, uh, and yeah, we, Anthos, I know has donated some food to some, uh, for a few of them. So that's been, uh, they've been really generous and stuff. So, uh, it's been, uh, really, really gone really well so far, but. Yeah. And usually it's at the municipal building. Um, but tomorrow it's at the fire and public safety building. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, the last. The last evening is a if you can't make it to any other ones, try to make it to that one because it's a really nice ceremony. There's cake. Um, all the local representatives and elected officials are there. So it's a, it's a good chance to get to talk to some people and um, just see what every everybody has accomplished over the, the course of the series. 
It's a good reminder for us to put in an order for the cake. Thank you, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, okay, we'll move on to Citizens Service Award, which um, we met, uh, Leah, Margaret, and I met last week after reviewing applications and we have we selected um a winner and uh and are we supposed to i don't know if we're do we tell it looks this is a public recorded meeting so i don't think that okay. we announce it i don't yes i don't think so either but uh we um but we will we have alerted that winner and uh who was uh very flattered that um they won. So, um, I, uh, so yeah, it was, uh, it was a, uh, so that was, uh, done and that will be part of the, uh, the dinner, um, that, uh, we are also all invited to, um, on March 26th with, which I don't know if we have had received uh, official invites about that yet. I, we I don't think they've come out yet. Okay. The, yeah. So look for that. Um, but I believe it's March 26th. Um, it's a dinner for that they, for people who are newer to the CRB, it's a dinner that we have every two years, not for CRB only, but for all um, board members, uh, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, all, but I believe it's all board members uh, that uh, every two years they hold it. And um, the Citizen Service Award is what we present Um uh at that time for uh for the for both years is that correct right yes yeah and it's uh mark wednesday march 27th at thank the you. public safety center great thank you very much rob um okay um new business does anybody have any uh new business they wanted to bring to the table today Okay. Well, um, we'll, uh, we can move along then. Um, the, uh, do we have a motion to, uh, adjourn? I move to adjourn. A second. Second. And we are adjourned then. Thank you, everybody. Um, and, uh, I'll be sure I can also send around, um, Robin, it was for, I guess is there any would there be any reason I shouldn't send of these the data from the survey to all uh CRB members for any uh or is or it can that I assume that can be that can be shared with everybody. I think so because it's informational. You're not making any right. decisions or taking a vote or anything like that. Okay, great. Uh, well, then I'll share that around, and then Dave and I, uh, well, I will pick Dave's uh, brain to get some spreadsheet magic. But um, <laughs> uh, but thank you, everybody. Uh, appreciate you all making it uh, time for having the uh, having this meeting and having the quorum. And we'll hopefully great. see you next month. Thank you. Bye, yes. everyone. Bye, everybody. Night. Thank you.